Uh, the Committee on Public Services oversight over all elements of um, the lives of those of us in public life. And I, although it's not in the job description, I've taken on the role of cheerleader in chief for people in public life. Uh, I, I would assert and defend the proposition that most of us are hardworking. Uh, most of us could be making a lot more money uh, if we weren't in public life. And most of us will be retiring on uh, very, very modest pensions, many of us paying, having paid for those <coughs> pensions with our own contributions. So um, when you read about the excesses of uh, the, the state's pension system, I can assure you and prove to you, if you need proof, that, uh, while, that there are some exceptions that are worthy of some of those uh, banner headlines, but they are absolutely <coughs> exceptions. Um, having said that, I think we've got some work to do to make sure that uh, the pension system is uh, financially viable, equitable, treats everybody the same, um, and, and that the public has confidence in it. So a couple of things I'll, I'll put on the table for you. First of all, uh, our pension system, as is the case with every state's pension system and most <coughs> community pension systems, uh, is underfunded and under a federal mandate of about 20 years or so ago we are on track to address this unfunded pension liability and I we need to recommit ourselves to that responsibility uh, two years ago the federal government challenged us to do the same for unfunded health care costs for future retirees and we're looking at somewhere between a seven and thirteen billion dollar problem that we have to make sure that those who retire from public service uh, will get not just their pensions, but also their the health care uh, coverage that they are expecting and entitled to. So part of health care reform, a part of health care reform, and part of pension reform, for me, um, is making sure the system works for those it is designed uh, to protect. Having said that, I do think both to keep the system healthy and to restore public confidence, we need to address some of the abuses and excesses that, that have gotten uh, press attention. And there will be attempts to do that in this session. Many of the problems derive from the fact that there are some vagaries in the law about what we mean by regular compensation. Some people have interpreted that to include housing allowances. Some people have included um, a uniform money that's allowed for uniforms, for police and uh, fire in particular. Some have included transportation for those who have cars. And so people retire thinking that that was part of their compensation and that therefore their, their pension benefit should be calculated on the value of all those things. Uh, sadly, the law right now is quite ambiguous on whether that's true or not. So A, we get a lot of litigation as a result of that. And B, we get a lot of inequity because different, different boards decide, come up with different decisions with comparable data. So it's, it's not working terribly well. So we will try to fix that. We'll also fix, uh, at least try to fix, the problem that Will spoke to, uh, although how to fix it is a, is a real challenge. And if anybody has any great ideas about this, I am more than open to them. But how to address the fact that some public employees make extremely modest salaries for a long period of time and yet given that our system is our pension system is based on the, the highest three years suddenly they're making really nice money for three years and uh, the pension is based on those three years not on their salary in the years before that that is we've got some issues to, to look at there um, we also have some examples in the media recently of uh, elected officials either not seeking re-election or not being re-elected and claiming extra pensions under a provision of the law that was set up to protect people who are fired from career positions because of the changing political winds. So career folks who work for Senator X and then Senator X loses his or her election and they lose their position because the Senator X's replacement is of a different party. So these are professionals who've devoted their lives 
um, and are then kicked out of their jobs for political reasons. Um, some many years ago, there was a desire to protect those public servants from that kind of political pressure. Uh, for at the time, people who lost office um, were included in that. I I think that is inappropriate. I think those of us who run for office ought to be held accountable to the voters, and if the voters decide it's time for us to go, that should not mean that we can double our pensions. So I think I'm, I'm eager to address that issue. Um, similarly, we have a special provision um, some of our predecessors put in place for us that if we serve one day of a new year, as we almost always do because the new legislative session begins on the first Wednesday in January, so unless that happens to be on January 1st, and even when it is on January 1st, technically we're in office until January 1st, so we get credit for an entire year of service for as little as one day of, of um, public life, and I think, I think we can eliminate that provision, um, both to restore some fiscal integrity to the system and, and mainly to restore public trust. Um, last, the last issue I just want to put on the table, and I'm taking more time than I should here, but our pension system over the years has come to be used uh, and carry the weight of some serious shortcomings of our disability system and serious shortcomings in wages. Uh, for the most part, we many public sector employees are underpaid, and the only way that uh, they have been compensated over the years, rather than getting salary increases, is to change the terms of their retirement. So we're essentially deferring and putting onto the next generation the responsibility for a reasonable package that includes salaries and, and benefits. Uh, and that has uh, put pressure on the pension system that it was not designed to bear. Um, similarly, the, uh, those who leave on disability, our disability system needs a very serious rethinking. Um, and if we need to do a better job of providing for those who are disabled because of their employment, let's do that, but let's not confuse that with retirement, which we have done. 